So let me just kind of walk through some basics in this first uh, segment that we're having. And the, the key thing as Christians is to actually begin to think about this topic in a Christian manner. Oftentimes, when I talk to people about this topic, they'll bring up uh, economics, they'll bring up uh, security, they'll bring up uh, health care, education, all these things, which are things you need to get to. But these are often shaped, the talking points about this are often shaped by our culture. And it reminds me of a passage in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which warns us not to be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world. And part of the pattern of this world is the world's ideologies. And we are shaped. And sometimes what happens is we'll, we'll take a stance and we'll make our decision because of our ideology or political party. And then we go look for some verses. So I'm going to try to flip it on its head. The other thing we have to realize when we get into this conversation is it's a multiple audience. I, I'm bilingual. So sometimes I will do this with an English audience, speaking audience, and sometimes with a Spanish speaking audience. And those are very different audiences. For the first audience, it's an exposure to all that the Bible has to say, which is a lot. And for the Spanish speakers, it'll be the same. But the difference is now that they're seeing themselves in the text. Ahí estamos nosotros. Estas son nuestras historias. These are our stories. We're in the book itself. And so uh, this is more of the first kind, just introducing you to the wealth of things that are there. And I'll be doing kind of a missional approach, not public policy. Um, that's complicated. And that really is beyond our purview. So I'm trying to give us more of a moral compass, a biblical framework, than moving into policy issues that we'll talk about some of that uh, later on in this series. Another thing that we have to decide on is where do we start the conversation? What is a constructive starting point? And oftentimes what happens is it starts with politics. Do you have documents or don't you have documents? And that's not a conversation. That's really just a black and white yes or no. And oftentimes people who uh, are very strict on immigration will go to a passage like Romans 13. And what I will tell them is that uh, that's in my Bible too, uh, but it's about page 1000. Why don't we begin on page one? And then we can get to Romans 13, but we'll have all of this background to learn how we actually read Romans 13. And what I would suggest is that we begin with the image of God in chapter one of Genesis, page one. And there it says that every human is made the image of God. Now, this means that all humans, because we're the pinnacle of creation, have ultimate value. And of course, Jesus would die for us. So this is a foundational uh, belief of, of all Christians. But there's something in that passage uh, in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, where it says that humans are also to subdue and rule the earth. And now you're talking about not only human value, but now you're talking about human potential. And now you begin to change the conversation to think about what these immigrants can bring all their potential and energy to the national good. And so now it's not about punishing necessarily, but about facilitating for the good of, uh, of, of the country. And so the idea is to begin not with the immigrant legality as the starting point, but uh, immigrant humanity. The next thing that I would suggest to you, and uh, on your screen you will eventually see a, a list of biblical stories in the Old Testament of all of these people who were forced to migrate because of hunger, because of war, um, just like we see today. So I could just go through a litany of these. Let me just mention some of these to you. Um, Abram, uh, the father of the faith, uh, leaves Ur the Chaldees, goes to Haran, Turkish Syrian border today, comes into Canaan, then he'll have to go to Egypt because of lack of food. And so the father of the faith is a migrant. Joseph, you'll see the story of Naomi and Ruth, Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, which is part of those stories, or return migration, which is another phenomenon in, 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 in the world today. And you also have the story of Egypt, where the Egyptians in Exodus chapter 1 are afraid of the foreigners because there are just too many of them. And you know the story, how they try to control that foreign population. So when we're thinking about the Bible and immigration, if we can understand, and I'll close with this in this first section, if we can understand that the history of humanity is the history of migration, 
We would expect then that the Bible would have a lot to say about migration because the people of God have been, have been migrating since the very beginning, and that's the case. And so I would challenge you to begin to put on a lens to read these Old Testament stories uh, like migrant stories. Thank you.